In this tutorial, we will look at how you can access values from property files in your Spring Boot application and actually use them in your code. Okay, so the first step in externalizing your configuration in your microservices is to actually put them in a config file and then read it in your application. So let's see how to do that. I'm gonna start by creating a brand new Spring Boot project by going to start.spring.io and I'm gonna choose my Maven coordinates here. Uh, the group is going to be io.javabrains and uh, the artifact is going to be spring boot config. Okay, so this is going to be my project uh, where I'm going to be demonstrating some of the configuration options. Now here uh, I choose the web dependency and that's really all I need. I don't need anything else. So I'm going to click on generate and I'm going to open this project in IntelliJ. Okay, so here's my project open in IntelliJ. Now, what I wanna do is have some configuration in some kind of an external file, a property file, and not have it be associated with the code. The idea is that I should be able to make changes to that property file without having to recompile the code, okay? So Spring Boot projects by default come with, uh, let me switch to packages view here, uh, or expand the resources section here, there is this application.properties file, okay? So this is a blank file that gets created when you do a start.spring.io project generation. This is basically a placeholder where it says, hey, you want any configuration? Here's where you put it. And here, the values can be put as key value pairs, okay? So you have key equals values. You can create as many properties as you want over here, and you can access them, access the values in your code directly. So I'm gonna create a simple property here. I'm gonna call this my greeting equals, uh, let's say, hello, okay? Now what I wanna do is access this value of the my greeting, my dot greeting property in a controller and have it respond in an actual web request, okay? So I'm going to create a new REST controller. I'm going to right click, create a new class. Java class, I'm gonna call this greeting controller. And uh, this is a rest controller. All right, now I'm gonna create a method here which maps to a slash greeting request. All right, it's gonna return a string. Uh, the method name is greeting, it doesn't take any arguments. And uh, let's say this returns the greeting Hello, okay, so I can, of course, hard code this and say H-E-L-L over here, but this is not what we want, right? We want to have it pull up the value from the configuration, right? So let me add a get mapping over here, mapping to slash greeting. So if I were to run this right now, it is gonna print hello when I access greeting, but what I want is to change this hard coded string to pick up the value from this property file, okay? So how do I do that? The way to do this, is by actually having Spring inject the value to my controller rather than me having to look it up, okay? So I'm not saying, hey, Spring, give me the value from the property. It instead works the other way. It's dependency injection. Similarly, this is value injection. We can say, hey, Spring, I'm going to put this property over here on my class. I'm gonna put the member variable in my class. Now you inject the value into that member variable, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this value string over here, and uh, I'm going to create a new member variable in my controller. Let's say private string. I'm gonna call this greeting message, okay? Now here, I can tell Spring to inject the value of that property into this member variable, and I can do that by using the at value annotation. Now this at value annotation takes a string as an argument, and you can provide a string value and that's literally what's gonna get assigned to greeting message, but that's not what we want. We want Spring to actually pull up the property value from the property file. So there's a special syntax for that. What you need to do is use this dollar and curly brace syn syntax, all right? So if you use the dollar and curly brace, you can specify the name of the property between the curly braces, and what Spring is gonna do is it's gonna fetch the value for that property from the property file and assign it to greeting message. So I'm going to paste my my.greeting property here, and this will be substituted by Spring with the actual value into greeting message. Now I'm gonna take that greeting message value and return that instead of my hardcoded string. And this is it, this is all it takes 
to have spring look up a value from the property file. So I'm gonna change this to something else, hello world, so that we know it's actually pulling up from the property file. And now I can run my spring application. If I open the browser and uh, access localhost 8080 slash greeting, I'm gonna get hello world as the message, all right? So it's pulling up the value directly from the property file by using the at value annotation. So this is the first way in which you can configure your Spring Boot microservices. Or well, anything that's configurable, anything that doesn't need a code change can go into a property file. Now another thing about property files is that you can actually reference one from another directly in your property file. You can use the same syntax for looking up in your property file. So for example, when you have this, uh, let's say app.name, I'm gonna give it some name, my app, right? Some descriptive name. I can reference that value, my app, in another property. So let's say I do app.description is welcome to the app name. So I can do the dollar curly brace and then do app.name. And what this is gonna do is when the value is being resolved, Spring Boot is gonna plug in the value for app.name into the value for app.description. So app.description is gonna have a value, welcome to my app, okay? So this is super handy. You don't have to use this only in the value annotation in your code, the dollar curly brace syntax. You can use it in your property file to reference other property files and Spring is gonna do all the job for you automatically. Okay, so this is pretty cool. You can set values in your property files and look it up in your code. Now, how happy are you with this kind of configuration? Have we achieved all the goals that we talked about? Well, no. I don't even think we have achieved the externalized property file goal either. Because think about it. You have taken your configuration from your code and put it into the property file, but guess what happens when you build your Spring application? It creates a jar, and the property file is actually sitting inside the jar. What good is it to externalize it if the property file is actually going inside the jar, right? What, what benefit have we achieved? Well, there is a certain benefit to taking code, taking the values from the code and putting it into a property file, even if the property file is sitting inside the jar, because there are ways in which you can override it. In the next tutorial, let's talk about some of the sources in which you can externalize the properties that you have in your properties file so that you don't have to be restricted by what's inside the jar. We can have it look a little outside the jar and we're gonna make our first step towards externalizing our configuration and microservices. So check out the next tutorial and I'll see you there.